I have with me, lots of folks are talking about Bill Cosby and that there are women who have come out of the woodwork accusing him of sexual harassment or sexual assault. And uh, it is the talk of the town right now. I have with me a, a young woman, Tali, Talia Levin, and she is a f- freelance editor writer and tutor based in New York, uh, Brooklyn, New York, and an international fellow at Huffington Post, why I never reported my sexual assault. Talia, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My last name is Laven. (laughs) Oh, Laven. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad. No, I want to do it right. Laven, thank you. Mm-hmm. So you wrote this article in response. You said that uh, you wrote this article as an answer to people who ask why the accusers waited so long to come out against Bill Cosby. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, uh, that was definitely a large part of it. Um, you You also say that while in college— you were sexually assaulted. Can you tell yes. us about that? Well, um, it was a very frightening experience to have had. Uh, it was in my sophomore year of college. I was 20. Um, and I'm going to preface this by saying that I recognize that what happened to me was a relatively, um, you know, what some people would categorize as a minor incident. Um, and it's not something that's, you know, defined my life, but I realized that um, I was part of a statistic of people that um, that hadn't reported their sexual assaults. And, you know, I, I wanted to talk about some of my motivations for keeping this hidden, even from some of my closest friends, for a very long time. Um, and, you know, some of the guilt and fear and shame that goes into hiding these situations, Um, you know, because what happened to me uh, essentially was you had a a drunk, you know, man in my room who was ignoring that I was saying no, um, seeking to sort of physically restrain me and uh, uh, force himself on me, and it was a very frightening and traumatic experience. Um, but even so I was blaming myself, you know, I was finding all sorts of reasons why, you know, I was, you know, uh, partially, you know, I felt not only, I mean, it's not that I felt responsible, but I felt, you know, how did I let this happen? Um, and, and I realized looking back on it now as a, you know, at 25 and a bit more knowledgeable about myself, um, I realized that there are a lot of attitudes that I internalized about, you know, um, what people should be allowed to talk about, what, you know, yeah, I mean, that that kind of thing. I guess that's, Do that's you, the general gist. Had you been drinking as well? Um, yeah, I had. I uh, It was um, after a stand-up comedy show. Uh, I was doing stand-up comedy at the time, uh, sort of an after party, and... Uh, these were my closest friends and my closest confidants. I was in my own room, um, and I felt safe to to indulge. Um, and so you guys and, had a party. You had these friends over. This particular guy was a part of the group. and He was not part of the, the stand-up comedy group, but no. he was sort of part of the general campus scene. There were only a few people that weren't part of the group, people that I knew well. Um, and as I said, it was in my own room. So yeah, I did feel comfortable. Did drinking. you know this guy? Um, I knew him. I didn't know him well. Um, I, I'd never really interacted with him much before. Um, so the fact that he, you know, felt entitled to, to try and force himself on me is pretty, was pretty astounding and not something that I would have anticipated at that tender age. Did you invite him over or someone else did? Uh, he had sort of attached himself to our group after the show. He'd been at the show and wound up coming and, and hanging out with us to party. So, no, I didn't invite him over to my room. I invited the group to come and, and so you know, someone, hang out in my living room. So someone else in the group invited him? 
Yeah, because he was, you know, close to several people in the group. And yes. I would have had no reason. If this was at Harvard, you know, I would have had no reason to have anticipated, you know, that this kind of thing would have happened. And, um, and so at the end of the party, everybody left but this guy. Um, yeah, exactly. Yes, everyone and, left. And why didn't you ask him to leave at the same time, at the time that everybody else were leaving? Um, you know, I think when people are intoxicated, um, they're not always up to the same standards of alertness or wariness that um, they would be in other circumstances. And like I said, I had no reason prior to this incident to suspect him of, you know, not caring about consent or not caring about me saying no. I, you know, I had a serious boyfriend at the time. It just wasn't within the realm of things that I could have possibly anticipated. So both of you were intoxicated. And so you're saying that because you were intoxicated, you didn't have a, a normal mindset. And it, is it possible he didn't have one either? Uh, you had I mean, an it, it is possible. Of- it is possible. Right. I mean, the alcohol does lower inhibitions, but I think that um, that's not an excuse uh, for, you know, for acting in this predatory manner. Um, you know, people who punch other people out um, when they're when they're drunk uh, certainly don't experience any uh, laxity in in terms of, you know, punishment or repercussions. And so, so you say that you had a serious boyfriend at the time. Was your boyfriend at the party and left the guy there, too? Uh, he was not. He was oh. not there. Oh, OK. And so now uh, he's that, currently my he's my husband now. <laughs> and, uh, um, so we've been together that, for about six years. And knowing that you had a serious boyfriend, you were too intoxicated to say to this guy that you didn't know well that you need to leave? I mean, I said, no, I don't want to kiss you. No, I have a boyfriend. No. I know, but as everyone else were leaving, and you didn't know this guy that well, were you too intoxicated to say, hey, everybody, take your friends with you. You can't leave him behind? I mean, you know, I, I guess that's not, I mean, like I said, it's not something that I, said because it's not I, I I didn't anticipate that this guy would take liberties with me. It's not something that was anything I could have, you know, anticipated or, or even conceived of at the time. So this You know, guy- and I think expecting me to to have known that this is a man who would ignore when I said no, um, that's just not something that was part of my worldview at the time. I was young and, and naive and You were twenty five um, at the time? I was 20 at the time. 20. And how old was he? Uh, he, I think he was um, sim- a similar age, 21. Right. 22. And so what reason did he give you that he was staying behind? You know, he didn't, I, uh, it's been a number of years, so I don't remember if he particularly um, gave me a reason. He just kind of lingered. And I mean, was I supposed to have read his mind? Um, I don't. I don't know that I. Let me take uh, a quick break. Let me take a quick break. Eight 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 seven seven five three seven seven three. Back in a moment. Okay, Talia Laven is with me. She wrote an article for the Huffington Post: Why I Never Reported My Sexual Assault. Very interesting article. So I wanted to talk to her for a few minutes about this. So, Talia, just for my information and, and the folks who are listening, you had this party, a group of friends came over, someone in the group knew this particular guy, he was with them, you guys got drunk, had some fun, everybody kind of tipsy, everybody leave, but this guy, you don't ask him to leave, and he stays, and how did he sexually assault you? Well, so first of all, I want to question, you know, I want to turn the question around on you uh, and and question your premise in, in that, you know, the questions that you've been asking me so far indicate that I had a responsibility to ask this man, you know, to leave right away, that I should have anticipated um, an attack on me. Um, whereas my question is, why did this man think that he had the right 
to force attempt, attempt to force himself on me. I mean, why why should I, you know, why should I be in a state where I should anticipate that someone who is my peer, um, someone who, you know, I feel equal with in, every, in any other context should feel that he has the right to take liberties with me in a sexual context? Why should I, you know, why should I anticipate that a peer and an equal will consider himself uh, so superior to me that my consent is irrelevant? <laughs> well, because I have no... He is male and I am female. I have no idea what the what you're talking about at all. You're my guest on the show. I don't know you. I don't know the guy. I'm just gathering information during an interview. That's all that's happening here. Right. So, so, so all, you know, I all think that stuff that you're saying. that you're asking me are sort of indicative of a, a general problem. Um, but that's insane. Let me go back this, to you know, Talia. You when this sort of thing happens, we Talia, ask women, let me go back. Hold on. More hold on. Hold on. Hold alert. on. Calm down. Calm down. Um, did this guy <laughs> actually have sex with you? No, he didn't actually have sex with me. Did um, it, what happened? Uh, you know, what happened was, uh, essentially, he uh, continually tried to um, tried to kiss me, um, which sounds, I guess, like a minor thing. But when you're continually saying no, when someone follows you, I did leave. Um, and he pinned me against the wall of my staircase uh, in my dorm room, uh, in my dorm, uh, you know, and only when a male friend of his came to pick him up, uh, did he, you know, sort of desist from his activities. Had he, had he stayed, um, I don't know. I don't know what would have happened, and it's not something I care to speculate about. So the only um, thing that happened this was a case in which I said no. I said no. I said no. I had a boyfriend. I said no, and it didn't make one whit of difference. So the only thing that happened is that the guy tried to kiss you. He was never able to kiss you, and then someone picked him up and he laughed, right? Um, yeah, that that's what happened. Oh, okay. Uh, and, and you know, and you say he pinned you uh, to the wall and tried to kiss you, but you didn't let him. He laughed, and that felt like sexual assault. Yeah, I mean, I think sexual assault um, is not something that we should necessarily. I mean, what what sexual assault is defined by is um, you know sexuality. Uh, that is obtained by coercion. And so it's not defined by which body parts you touch. It's about whether there's force involved. And I think certainly when you have someone who outweighed me, who was a foot taller than me, who was, you know, forcibly attempting to, you know, to kiss me and, and, and go further um, than that when I was not, I mean, I was in a state where I was able to resist. I was able to walk away, but I was not, as, you know, I was not necessarily able to resist with the, the vehemence I would have. So both of you were drunk and, so, and, and unconscious due to drunkenness. This thing, he, he tried to kiss I mean, you. I'm just wondering why, I mean, did you have but me on the program? Let me ask you about let this. Me know that my experience wasn't sexual. No, I'm, I'm just not learning the details of what happened. Let me ask this. What's wrong with... Uh, you say your article was an answer to people who asked why Bill Cosby accusers waited to accuse him. Is that true? That's why you wrote this article? Yeah. I mean, I think I, I was putting forward, this is not, you know, my own experience, uh, my, my only experience I've had. Um, this was an experience I felt would be relatable to a, a large audience um, of people. And I think there are a lot of people who were moved by the piece. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess what I was trying to say is that even in this incident, which um, felt traumatic to me, but, you know, ultimately, and I thank God for this, uh, did not result in me being physically violated. Even in, in this case, I uh, I felt deep shame. I felt deep What's wrong fear. with the I women felt... asking Bill Cosby? I mean, what's wrong with people asking why these women waited so long? What's wrong with that question? I don't understand. I mean, I don't, I think, I mean, first of all, it's often asked. What's ironic to me is that often the same people who are asking um, why did these women wait are often the ones leveling the harshest criticism against the same women um, about their motivations, about their, you know, the most rampant speculation about who they are and what they do and, you know, 
And so to me, it's like, okay, you're wondering why these women waited because they were afraid to have every element of their lives open to hostile scrutiny because that's what happens when you report a rape or sexual assault. Should women be able to just accuse men and other men and women are not even allowed to ask why? I mean, I don't know what that means. Everyone has freedom of speech in this country. It's one of the beautiful things about it. And so, you know, I think, yeah, um, everyone, anyone is allowed to give their opinion. Um, at the same time, yeah, these women are allowed to come forward and say, this is what happened to me. And, and, and so, um, but, but other but, people I mean, do have that just, right to ask have... why, right? They should ask why, because there are two sides to every story. Let me well, ask. To me, it's just... To me, it's just that, um, you know, what, when you ask why, why did you wait? And at the same time, you engage in, in you know, relatively in, in vicious attacks against these women's character, you're answering your own question. Um, you know, in, in general, in this country, when any woman comes forward, whether she's coming forward to law but enforcement nobody, no or to a university or to her peers, Tal- she should be prepared to face verbal abuse and Talia, judgment. Talia, Talia, come down. Uh, no one. Please stop telling me to calm down. I, I have to say, I find it pretty insulting. Just calm down and let's communicate. Um, um, no one is accusing anyone of lying or not lying when they ask why. I mean, when I fall, if I fall on the ground, I ask, "Oh, why did I fall?" But let me ask: Is it time for men? Because a lot of men are being sexually assaulted by women. Is it time? for men to come out and start naming these women who are assaulting them, sexually assaulting them as well? I mean, I do think, yeah, I'm I'm actually glad you brought that up because I think that in general there should be less of a climate of fear and shame um, for people to come forward and say, yeah, I've been I've been victimized, I've been assaulted, I've been raped, whether you're a man or a woman. And I think the same, you know, the same... Uh, social more is that, you know, that shame women for coming forward and saying I was sexually assaulted because, you know, the answer will be kind of like the questions you were asking me earlier. You know, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? But I think don't it's you even learn harder for from, some men Don't to you come learn forward. from when you uh, ask I'm, yourself? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to answer. I'm hey, just listen answer to me. We run out of time. Hold on, hold on. Okay. When don't don't you learn from your situation when you ask why did this happen to me? Don't you? grow from that i mean i still i mean i guess i i I, what i didn't learn was no i don't have the right to drink with my friends that i feel comfortable with hold on hold on a minute let me take a quick break we'll come back and do one short segment and be done talia would you like to give out a website address or anything like that yeah, so um, my 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 website is uh, talialavin.com. Uh, the piece is why I never reported my sexual assault on the Huffington Post. Um, I encourage you to read. I encourage you to discuss um, and share the piece widely. Um, you know, I, I'd, I'd also like to say that um, probably the most meaningful part of writing this piece for me is that I've had people contacting me saying I was sexually assaulted. I was afraid to come forward. I felt um, all of the things that you're talking about. And so um, I've really appreciated the chance to make people feel less alone in their pain um, and to feel that, yeah, at the end of the day, the only person who's at fault um, for ignoring your uh, your boundaries, ignoring the, your right to sovereignty over your own body is, you know, the person who who chose to act in that way. Now that I've heard part of your story, I, I don't support what the guy did or or not support it because I wasn't there and I don't know why, but it's interesting. I want to know, do you believe in innocent until proven guilty? I mean, yes. Okay. And how about asking tough questions? Shouldn't we ask tough questions? questions so that we can learn what not to do in our lives or so that we will not make the same mistakes over? I mean, I think we should ask ask tough questions of both parties. To me, it seems unfair that the tough questions are 
being asked only at the the party who's coming forward with with the allegations. I mean, if you're talking about uh, I'd like to bring in Bill Cosby for a second, um, because I noticed in a piece you wrote, um, you talked about, you know, uh, in particular, you talked about, uh, you know, Bill Cosby's accusers should just move on because their grievances weren't uh, addressed through the justice system. And, um, you know, I took a look at some of the statutes on, on rape and sexual assault and how they've evolved over the past 50 years. Um, there are a number of you know, until 2011, male rape, which is an issue um, that you brought up, uh, was not actually defined as rape by the FBI until until 2011. Um, oral rape was not considered rape until very recently. And so, you know, that doesn't mean that anything that happened before the laws changed didn't happen, didn't cause deep pain, didn't cause deep grievances, and, and shouldn't be talked about. What I is think the it's purpose? Always, I mean, I think it's a mistake to say that the only way to get justice or the only way to uncover truth is through formal proceedings in a court of law. There's what a reason the... we have free speech, and it's always existed, you know, to supplement the justice system and, and to provide Let a me meaningful ask you this. and, and hey, important hey, hey, counterbalance hey, hey. Hold on, hold on. to the justice system. Hold on. Uh, what is the purpose of women or men, men or women, going public and uh, telling these things? What do they expect to get from it? You know, uh, what they expect, I think, is no one has the right to be beloved. No one has the right to be famous. Um, and who says and, that? Uh, That's I mean, according to that, who? This is something that, that I've said and, and I've thought about. So what, what public opinion gives, public opinion can take away. And so these women are, are hoping to influence the public. In what way? Saying, For what reason? Man- they want to um, destroy the uh, women who... Because Bill Cosby has always positioned No, I'm not talking about Bill authority. Cosby. I'm not talking about Bill Cosby and in who, particular. Are you, talking? are you talking about women w- in general, men, and, men in general? Hold on, hold on. I'll tell you. When... And, when men and women go public and say that they have been sexually assaulted, what are those men and women trying to get by going public? That's the question. I mean, I think it, it's different in every case. And, you know, I went public with my story of sexual assault because I wanted to, you know, I wanted to express a, a gesture of support for for other women who had come forward with their stories. I wanted to make people feel less alone with their pain, and I wanted to illuminate And what do other women want, or men? What do they want when they go public? I can't speak to other people's motivations. I think a lot of the reason is to say this public figure who's being held up as a moral authority or who's being held up as an icon actually has a rotten core. Do Do they want revenge? I mean, I think that it's impossible for me to. Um, I think it's impossible for me to make a statement on. I don't know uh, on the general motivations of anyone who comes forward to talk about their sexual assault. I think it's different in every case. Um, so, this is. I think there's a difference between revenge and a desire for revenge and a desire for uh, for truth or a desire for justice. And I don't understand what type of justice are they getting. Would they want uh, their accuser to go public and tell what they did in situations like that? Would they like that? Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Let's say that um, some guy accused a woman for raping him or sexually assaulting him, um, and he went public. Would he want her to go public and say, well, he did this as well? Or would he want her to just stay quiet in the background and not be allowed to express what her point of view about it? I'm not sure what you mean when you say allowed. I mean, just I mean, like anyone is allowed to say anything in America. It's one of the beauties of our country. There is no, you know, there there are very few instances in which speech is censored, and that's a beautiful thing. You, uh, so anyone uh, guy is allowed, is allowed to today, come forward and say anything. A gal, um, a guy is allowed today to confront but, their accusers. Um, yeah, they 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 are allowed to confront their accusers, uh, and their accusers are allowed to confront them and say, "I want the truth to come out about who you are." 
Oh, okay. I haven't seen that, but I'll take your word at it. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Very interesting. I learned a lot from you today that I didn't know was going on. And uh, very interesting yeah, article. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, and again, the article is why I never reported my sexual assault. Uh, my name is Talia Levin, and, and thanks for having me on. And it's on the Huffington Post. Do you? Yeah. Uh, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. All right. Reverend, and uh, take care. All right. Thank you for coming on. 888-775-3773. Um, let's go to the Bible. Go to God. Bobby, go to God. Welcome to the show, sir. Just oh. that was the perfect question right there. Hold on. Let me, I'm sorry. Let me take a, a quick break, Let me, and I'll come back to you. I didn't realize we were coming to a break like that. Back in a moment, folks. What I recommend is that men and women go back to the good old days when— People believed and it was taught to wait until marriage before sex. That's the best way. It's like if you don't want to catch AIDS, wait until marriage and both man and woman marry each other as a virgin. And that way you can't get, you can't get AIDS. So if men and women were to wait until marriage, you wouldn't have to try to figure out a worry if it's sexual assault or, or not either way. That's the best way to go. And in life, when we veer from doing the right thing, it brings on negative consequences. So let's go back to, as human beings, doing it the right way, at least putting forward a good effort. And then all this stuff will go away. I'm, I'm just saying out loud. Uh, let me go back to the Bible. Go to God. Bible. Go to God. A second great, a second great point. Um, you're 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 correct in this in this day and age with sexual morality being at an all time low and women being just loose in general, women just being loose as can be. Um, and not it, all women are like that. What's, right. What's happening in is general, sexual it, sexuality it, is being taught. In the public schools now, they're being encouraged to have sex at such an early age. And then once you get into it, you lose control of yourself and it goes out of control. And then you get in trouble for doing it when the people who cause you to do it don't admit that they encouraged you to do it when you were younger. Sexual standards of morality have become so bad now that it's difficult to tell between uh, a rape and a woman who wanted uh, rough sex for instance, and this guy may have had plenty of or, or a few sexual partners who liked that kind of thing, you know, pinning against the wall and that kind of thing. And so that was his. Well, I don't want to thing. speculate about uh, anything about that situation because I don't know anything about that situation. And so, that's why I'm trying to get some information but, on the situation. But that's just speculation what you're saying. now. It is. But my point. Is, but you can't spec. You shouldn't speculate about that. No, I'm throwing out speculation in order to make a point, not to prove anything that happened at that time. And the point is that calling that sexual assault is ridiculous. I mean, that's the best she can come up with for, from her own personal experience of what sexual assault is. That just mm -hmm. that doesn't even sound close to it. And then when you started asking her, you know, what she could have done to avoid the situation, I mean, didn't she have parents or a mother who taught her? You know, that when you're both drunk, uh, everybody leaves at the same time and you don't have somebody stay after. You know, j just just so it looks right, you know, uh, protect your reputation. Um, just little little things like that. Little well, the one thing that have done. the one thing that we have to do now in society, men and women, is we have to make a conservative, conservative effort to protect ourselves, I remember Billy Graham said that he wouldn't counsel with women without other people being in the room and wow. because he knew to protect himself because you can be accused. And once you're accused, how do you prove that it's not true? Because most people love believing lies. And once they believe that about you, you can never, ever clear your name, be, you know, because of that. So the best right. thing now since society has sank so low 
and just gotten so far away from the values of God and love for one another, it's best to figure out how do you protect yourself now so you don't hopefully be accused of that without a witness being around. Yeah, good point. Um, when, when you made We don't that, have the society that we have when we were growing up. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, when you, when you uh, made that point of, with that question that uh, why would you bring such a thing public, you know, um, a, a, a sexual assault or something that you've experienced, what's, what's your purpose or what's these people's purpose, especially the women, for bringing this forward? And it's to paint all men as being, you know, sexual um, deviants and, and, uh, and sexual rapists and... and uh, well, uh, there is an attack on men. Men are the most hated species on earth today and and it's because of who they represent they represent christ on earth and so i know they would love to to you know there are people out there who would love to destroy the man um i wanted to say something else you know when, you know jesse when you say it's because they, they represent christ on earth i thought christ was a good guy and, and and why would you want to destroy christ on earth you know Be, because but especially when it comes to these women but because evil hate good and any man or woman who represent good, evil sees that, and evil works through other men and women, they're going to try to destroy it. They, it's not the human being himself, him or herself, that's trying to destroy it, but it's the spirit that made a home in them. Evil hate good, and I want people to realize that our battle is a spiritual battle between good and evil. You see that most white, most black people hate white people today. They're racist against white people, and, and that that's evil, and in them, the blacks want to destroy white people, all of them, because yeah. evil doesn't care who it destroys, wants to hate you. Yeah, as long as there's some kind of thing that sparks you a memory of what they experience, a bad memory, I, uh, whether it's white or female or whatever, they want to go after that. Right. I wish that all men, men and women, can wake up and realize what's really, really going on spiritually. I wish that they could see beyond the physical person and and can see the spirit of what's going on. I really do, because it would change everything. Yes, absolutely. Good call, Baba Gotcha God. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Back in a moment, folks. <laughs> 